My experience with using Intuitive's robotic uh, bronchoscopy technology has been very promising. I've used it for sampling small peripheral nodules. This system allows me to drive to very small nodules in the periphery of the lung with precision and very safely. Most importantly, when I get there, I can sample that nodule with very conventional instruments which allow me to get good sized biopsies, which is very different to using a small bronchoscope to navigate to that position. It also allowed me to keep the bronchoscope very still because when the catheter is not moving, it, by, as driven by the doctor, the catheter stays completely still. And so this is very helpful in confer both confirming a position and allowing that position to stay still as I take multiple samples. The technology behind Intuitive's robotic assisted technology is very sophisticated and lends itself to some very innovative ways for the doctor to be aware of exactly where the catheter is in the airway. The catheter is driven by a trackball and that is driven into the patient through the swivel connector on the top of an endotracheal tube. The doctor advances that with a, a spinning wheel which can either advance the catheter forwards or backwards. In addition, using a circular trackball, the distant end of the catheter can be articulated in any direction. And it's this um, combination of scrolling forward and back and changing the direction of the articulated end that gives the precision to the driving of the catheter as we select small airways to advance the catheter through. Some very interesting novel technology is combined into the, the um, make of the catheter in the form of a number of very fine fiber optic bundles which have many, many position sensing points. These sensing points give this catheter the ability for the doctor to see the shape of the catheter as presented in a virtual image in real time at all times during the procedure. So we can see the, the shape of the catheter along its full length, which can become very important when we're reaching towards the peripheral nodule and we're wanting to get really precise views of the shape of the catheter to match what we see in terms of the, the shape of the virtual plan that we are driving along. The shape sensing technology is very novel and does not require a knowledge of where the catheter is in three dimensional space. It it's uses the doctor's own knowledge of the anatomy of the airway as he's using the endoluminal view as presented with the virtual bronchoscopic plan as determined by the CT um, plan that's developed before the procedure. When we're using the intuitive robotic assisted system, when we reach the peripheral nodule at the end of our navigation, we park the system by merely taking our hands off and the catheter stays in place. We have to understand that at, from that point on, once we remove the visualizing optic, we will be operating to take samples of the nodule without any direct real-time visualization using the video optic. There are many other aspects to the system that allows this to be compensated for. First of all, we have the virtual shape of the catheter being displayed for us at all times. And so that we know that the catheter, first of all, is in a correct shape to be approaching the lesion. We know that it is not moving when we um, take our hands away from the system and confirm that it stays in position. Secondly, we have fluoroscopic guidance to tell us that the catheter also is staying in position and that our nodule uh, sampling forceps or needles are actually being correctly extended. So whilst we don't have vision of that happening directly, there are many other indirect ways to determine that those forceps or needles are actually going into the nodule. It's very important that um, doctors understand that before they remove the, the catheter, they must get a very clear visualization using the virtual plan of exactly where the nodule is with respect to the endoluminal view that they still have. 
because in that way the doctor can subtly change the angle of the tip of the catheter to give the best exit angle for the needles or brushes to head towards the nodule. This is particularly important where the nodule is extrinsic to the bronchus and we are not seeing the tumour inside the airway. So by preempting the position to which the catheter should be directed whilst vision is still available, the doctor can in many instances overcome the fact that he does not have visualisation actually at the time. The study results of our first human use of the intuitive robotic assisted system were those of a prospective analysis of the first 30 cases who came to our clinic with nodules between 10 and 30 millimetres in diameter. These were consecutive cases and they were not selected other than the fact that they had safe ability to undergo bronchoscopy under general anaesthetic and other conventional inclusion and exclusion criteria for bronchoscopic studies. Cases were also selected as long as they had a distance from the visceral pleura of more than 15 millimetres from the near edge of the nodule. Overall we had 30 cases and the mean diameter of those cases was 12 millimetres in axial dimension. Two thirds of the nodules were in the upper lobes and on average the nodules were in the seventh uh, generation of bronchi, so they were very small peripheral nodules. We sampled the nodules in 29 of 30 cases and in fact this was a, the key endpoint of our study. How many times can we actually reach the nodule and take representative material? And we were able to do this in 29 out of the 30 cases. The other key endpoint of the study was safety and we found that we were able to take many samples uh, very safely with no bleeding observed in the study and no instances of pneumothorax. Once we reached the nodule, we verified the position of the nodule with an eBus mini probe. We showed that we could get images of the nodules in 29 out of the 30 cases. This was very interesting because in fact only 60% of those nodules actually had a bronchus sign. So 40% of the nodules were bronchus sign negative. Still we were able to get ultrasound images in 29 of the 30 cases. In terms of the type of image that we had, half of the cases had a concentric or central image by eBus mini probe and half had an eccentric image. The cases were not selected by eBus image uh, type. We sampled all cases. The eBus image was merely to confirm nodule position before we went ahead and took samples. In terms of the yield of the system, we sampled nodules for malignancy, which had a mean diameter of 15 millimeters, and our overall success rate at six months for those malignant lesions was 88%. It's important to understand that 80% of the nodules in this study were less than 20 millimetres in axial dimension. Including both malignant and benign lesions, our overall diagnostic yield for the study was 80%. Overall, we were very happy with the diagnostic yield. and We were also very happy with the safety aspects of the system.